Hello everyone, this is Rajkumar Singh. In this lecture, we will study about time-independent perturbation theory, non-degenerate case. Perturbation theory is one of the approximation method in quantum theory. It is based on the assumption that the problem being investigated is only slightly different from the problem that can be solved exactly and the deviation between the two is very small. This deviation term is calculated and added to the exact solution as a correction term. In other words, we can say that perturbation theory is based on the known exact solutions to the problem to get the approximate solution. We express the Hamiltonian of the system as if it consists of two terms, H0 and HP, such that H equal to H0 plus HP, where H0 is the Hamiltonian of the unperturbed system and HP the Hamiltonian corresponding to the small perturbation. The perturbation Hamiltonian HP can be expressed in terms of a real dimensionless parameter lambda which is very small compared to 1 hp equal to lambda h dash therefore the ion value problem can be written as h naught plus lambda h dash psi n equal to e n psi n for the unperturbed system we have the expression h naught psi n naught equal to e n naught psi n naught where exact i n value e n naught and the i n function psi n naught are known. We assume that the perturbed i n energy and i n state can be expanded as a power series e n equal to e n naught plus lambda e n one plus lambda square e n two and so on. Similarly, the ket psi n equal to psi n naught plus lambda psi n one plus lambda square psi n two and so on. When lambda is small, the expression up to the first order term gives the dependable solution of the system. When lambda equal to zero, we return back to the unperturbed state whose exact solutions are known. Now, using equation 3 and equation 4 in equation 2, we get this expression. Here we have just used the expression for En and that of psi n expressed in terms of our series. Now, if we equate the coefficients of successive powers of lambda on both sides, we get first we have the term zero order in lambda that means the term free from lambda h naught psi n naught this is the term coming from the left hand side part of the above equation and this is equal to e n naught psi n naught this is the only term on the right hand side which is free from lambda similarly first order term in lambda by this we equate the coefficients of lambda on both sides. So from LHS we have h naught psi n1 plus h dash psi n naught equal to from RHS we have e n naught psi n1 plus e n1 psi n naught. Similarly second order term in lambda this we get by comparing the coefficients of lambda and square on both sides. So from this equation the coefficients of lambda square on left hand side is h naught psi n2 plus h dash psi n1. This is equal to the coefficient of, on the right hand side of lambda square and they are e n naught psi n2 plus e n1 psi n1 plus e n2 psi n naught. Here h dash comes by mistake. Please ignore this. An important observation here is that 
when we compare the zero order term in lambda and if we add these exponents of every term we get zero so here it is zero it's zero plus zero similarly for the first order in lambda we will get one so it is one it is zero it is one it is one zero one zero similarly for the second order term it is two it is one one it is zero two it is one one it is two zero now our calculation will be focused to determine e n one e n two and psi n one from the normalization condition we have the bray psi n naught and the ket psi n equal to one using this equation using equation four in this equation nine we have this expression psi n naught this is the same term as this term and for this ket psi n we are using equation four and this is the whole part of that equation and we put it equal to one as per this condition now since from the normalization condition this psi n naught psi n naught equal to one therefore we write for this term we write one plus we have lambda and the second term plus lambda square and the third term and so on this is equal to one this one and this one cancel out and then we are left with psi n naught psi n one equal to psi n naught psi n two and all these term equal to zero now first order correction equation seven multiplied by bray psi n naught gives so we have this bray psi n naught being multiplied to equation seven and on the right side also we have this bray be multiplying on the term other terms now since this is zero so we write zero here plus the second term and on the right hand side the first term is zero plus e and one from the second term so from here we conclude this this bray psi n naught as it as and get psi n naught equal to e n one so this is expression for e n one now using equation 12 in equation 3 we get for the first order correction e n equal to e n naught plus lambda e n one or e n equal to e n naught plus lambda and we write it here expression for e n naught e n one from the above as in equation 12 up to this we have e n equal to e n naught plus this expression and this finally gives e n equal to e n naught plus psi n naught h p psi n naught now if in certain cases the first order term vanishes then we cannot drop the second order term in calculation because this will be the only effective term and hence we need to consider the higher order terms now to determine psi n1 in the first order correction the eigen function psi n1 we use the fact that the set of unperturbed state psi n0 form an orthonormal basis and a complete set therefore we can write psi n1 equal to this expression summation over m psi m naught ket and the bray psi m naught and psi n one because this whole expression is one so one multiplying to the i n ket psi n one gives back something same thing which we have on the left hand side now just reshuffling the orders of the kets we have this expression we have just taken psi m naught and this psi n one inside and this goes outside so we have this expression 
Now to determine this expression psi m psi n1, we make use of equation 7 and multiply both sides of it by psi m0. After doing so, we have this expression where every term is being multiplied by psi m0 from equation 7. This gives an arrangement, rearrangement of these expressions. After this rearrangement, we have this expression. On the right hand side, we have EN0 minus EM0, then psi M0, psi N1. And this finally gives expression psi M0, psi N1 equal to this expression psi M0 not h dash psi n not divided by within bracket e n not minus e m not. Using this in equation 14, we get for an expression for psi n 1. An expression for psi n 1 expressed in terms of psi m not is given by this equation that is equation number 15. Yes, so far we have discussed the first order correction. We will discuss the second order correction in our next lecture. Thank you.